Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Dimitro Farchukov, and uh, I'll be glad to present uh, our work about the uh, resonant converter for inductive uh, charging of uh, light <coughs> electrical vehicle. Uh, I'm Dimitro Farchukov, Vladimir Dimitrov is the, is the other the other member in the uh, Dimitro roof. He sits on the chair. First, a little bit of facts. Nowadays, every one of us uh, met the usual traffic in the cities, and uh, there are very, uh, some uh, interesting uh, facts about this. For example, in the European Union, the congestions cost approximately 1% of the, uh, the, the, the internal product of the, of the country uh, yearly which is uh, around the 100 billion uh, euros, which is uh, a lot of money, it's an interesting fact. And uh, the most, uh, the worst thing is that, uh, moreover, around uh, 100,000 deaths is closely related to the pollution in the, in the, in the air, caused only by traffic, not, 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 uh, not another, another pollution, just by traffic. So, what's happening? Most Modern cities and countries are taking a part of the programs that include uh, bicycle integration in all big cities. You know uh, the bicycle lanes that uh, have been built and uh, uh, some um, employers encourage the, their uh, employees to use a bicycle to, uh, to a bike to, the, to, uh, to go to work. And uh, electrical bike is uh, actually very nice transportation in many ways because you don't have to push the pedals uh, and uh, for some people that are not so strong and don't want, just don't want to force themselves to drive it's very easier if they're completely electrical bikes and uh, combined hybrid bikes so you can choose whatever you want and it is completely eco ecological uh, I will talk firstly a little bit for the uh, uh, wire, wire, uh, wire charging. <coughs> uh, but our idea is uh, wire too, but uh, not not uh, using mechanical contacts. Usual the chargers uh, are using mechanical contacts, and um, they have some problems related to this. One of this is safety of electric shock, because uh, usually, as you see in the picture. Uh, many times, uh, the people who put their bikes, bicycle on their garden, uh, it's costly, it's close to the community and water. And um, uh, for example, if uh, little kids operate with these uh, things, uh, sometimes uh, the risk of uh, electric shock goes higher. Uh, reliability is lower because they use a mechanical contact and uh, they wear out, of course, after some time. And uh, <coughs> they're sensitive to dust and moisture again. Uh, and uh, not in the last place, the alignment. You have to put very correct, correctly the plug. So it's not very easy for some small kids that have to charge their bikes, bicycles. And um, almost um, this Think or make, make makes it uh, harder to put in the substation for the bikes for automatic chargers. And this is the usual chargers that uh, mostly are used for the bikes, the bike of, uh, electrical bike kits. And this thing, maybe uh, every one of, uh, of you know this plug. This is standard 220 or 120 volts plug, which sometimes in some systems has been used for charging the bike of the bicycle. So this is extremely dangerous if you if, uh, not uh, operate with uh, a, a lot of caution. And some of them are just they are directly uh, connected to the battery. So you can easily put the plug and uh, uh, 36 volt, uh, volts battery will be exposed, of course, if you connect it to 220. So this is the main advantages. Of course, there's uh, advantages. Everyone, everyone knows that's like uh, high efficiency. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, what do we 
pre propose is uh, contactless bicycle charging. Uh, of course, it can be used for uh, other vehicles, not only bicycles. And uh, it can be used even for cars, but just the dimensions will be uh, larger than, than the bicycle. The main problem here is complexity, firstly. This uh, because uh, it needs a lot of um, more advanced technologies, if I can say. Uh, and of course, some more parts and electromagnetic uh, components like the uh, ferrite cores and uh, actually the, the transformer that will transfer the energy. Efficiency, the efficiency <laughs> can be low too if uh, inappropriate schemes, uh, schemes are used. Advantages. They are safe because uh, they can be completely isolated for water, water, moisture, dust, and so on. So. And uh, they can be highly reliable because, uh, of, uh, again, of these reasons, they are completely isolated and not uh, exposed to the uh, environment. Alignment is easier, so it doesn't matter. For example, this this type of uh, this is ferrite cores with the coil. It doesn't matter how you do it. So it's very easy to uh, put your bicycle just in place in uh, these uh, charge stations, and it will be charged automatically. Of course, uh, it, uh, th there is some gap, but it it, would, it wouldn't be a problem. So this is the the main diagram of the of the circuit. We choose a four order resonant converter for inductive power transfer. It be, it has been previously used for wireless charging at high distance, approximately 100 millimeters or more. Uh, but we try to integrate it in this system. So it includes bridge rectifier. Here's a grid power you know, in the beginning, a uh, half bridge inverter, and here is the resonator tank, the serial and the parallel. It's transmission core and receiving core. Uh, and there is a High frequency rectifier and output. Usually, um, it possibility to have um, DC DC converter for uh, precision control for the battery, but it can be done with the feedback wireless feedback from Bluetooth wireless and uh, other some some other protocols. This is a whole scheme. Of course, we've done some simplification to make the model of the system because. Uh, uh, it's better to be simulated because uh, the experience costs a lot because you have to uh, manage uh, all magnetic components and uh, do a lot of coils and uh, resonator tanks. So it's, if uh, the proper model is done, the examination can, uh, can, be, can be easier and cheaper, of course. Uh, so what we've done? We've replaced the transistors with the uh, uh, ideal models, modules, which cost, of course, lost the uh, uh, lack of uh, accuracy, accuracy because um, the switching commutations uh, losses will not be included. The diodes are ideal too. We replaced the first uh, bridge, bridge rectifier and removed the secondary high frequency bridge rectifier. It, these things, these simplifications make the simulation maybe 20 times faster and uh, it for good uh, precision, now calculations goes around uh, one hour. So in the other way, it's uh, 20 hours. So it's, it's too much time. Uh, someone would say that if we remove the rectifier and um, the voltage source from the output, the regime of the inverter will change completely. But actually, our previous research shows that this will not happen. The regime is uh, changed, the mode is changed very slightly. So uh, this simplification uh, makes some errors around uh, 1 to 5%. So it's insignificant for this, uh, for this moment. Here is the table with the uh, values of the comp components, but uh, it will not be uh, very good if some, someone can ask, of course, uh, at the end. This is the coping coefficient we, uh, we, we provided. 
because uh, uh, this depends on the distance. For example, his gap nu uh, zero between the uh, transceiver and receiving and transmission coil. And he is two millimeters, uh, 6.5 and 70 millimeters, a large gap. Of course, 70 millimeters costs a lot. It's two, uh, 0 0.2 coupling uh, coefficient. But actually, all the design is calculated for this, for the worst case. So this is about the coupling coefficient a little bit, because it is very important uh, out of uh, all costing. These are uh, test, testing circuits, uh, testing coils. They are equal, but can be different if you need, if you want uh, other transmission ratio. And uh, here is uh, the, the chart. This chart shows that uh, uh, the coupling, the coupling, uh, coupling coefficient in uh, function of uh, the air gap. So there are two curves. One is with ferrit core, like this, like the, the real example. And we have one without ferrit core. So uh, it can be seen that at higher gaps, it doesn't matter that we have a ferrit core or, or not. Because uh, uh, the coupling uh, coefficient is very low other way. But when you put the ferrit core, like this example, the magnetic flux is uh, a lot more concentrated. And uh, at short distance, for example, five millimeters, it increases significantly, significantly. And uh, of course, we cannot use this metal because the bicycle has some metal parts. And as you see, the distribution of magnetic field, uh, if there is a met metal part out the uh, Back, back, back to the coils, it will induce the heat in the metal and it will cause a lot of losses. So this metal is used. These characteristics are taken uh, by ANSYS uh, Maxwell and verified by experimental results. And uh, they are pretty close to each other. The results. The presented circuit is simulated with a frequency, frequency range about uh, 65 to 145 kHz. And uh, these coupling, uh, coupling uh, coefficients. And the resonator tank is optimized for coupling, coupling uh, coefficient 0.2. You can see in the curves that around this uh, 80 kHz, it, there is a lot of power. This uh, chart shows the output power, just the output power, uh, in function of the frequency. And this chart shows um, relatively uh, loading of the transistor. See, this, uh, this is the maximum current through the transistors, through the inverter, uh, over the input current for the whole inverter. So if this goes higher, the transistor is completely very overloaded. And uh, of course, uh, it, can, can, it can't resist and it will defect. So uh, the serial um, resonant circuit is 80 kilohertz. So this, this is the reason that here is the peak. And as you see, it's a uh, lower gap. We have very straight and very short, very narrow um, resonance. And uh, it makes the system very, very hard to control. Because uh, if you move a little bit from the frequency, for example, see this graphic, see this chart. If you move a little bit, the current goes very high uh, through the transistors. So uh, it's not good to use this frequency uh, around the, the resonance. But here, the, there is the interesting point. You see that all coupling coefficients, uh, the transmitted power is lower, a lot more lower than the resonance. But uh, we can easily move around the frequency and track 
the, 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 the higher efficiency uh, during the process without uh, reaching some very dangerous origin for the transistors. The conclusion, I almost died before <laughs> in the last slide, is the uh, maximum output power in order to transit maximum uh, energy must be operated in lower frequency, as I showed this chart here. But the second diagram shows that the stress in the semiconductor device easily uh, <coughs> can reach very, very high, high values. So this, is, this would be, this is the problem. We actually burned some, a <laughs> few transistors in this area. Uh, and uh, in this area, it's uh, very easy to operate, of course, with lower transfer power. This doesn't mean that the efficiency is low. The efficiency can be high too, <coughs> in, in this in this frequency, around uh, 100 to 110 to 120 kilohertz. Uh, we achieve the efficiency around uh, between um, 70 and 90 percent. So it depends on the distance. So another efficiency. Uh, more safe operation in the area is near to the upper frequency, as I, I already said that. And another benefit is uh, the much dependency of the power transmitted for the, from the coupling coefficient. It doesn't matter actually here, uh, is it the one which is completely connected, which is uh, <laughs> more than a regular transformer, to uh, 2.5, which is very poor and weak uh, coupling coefficient. All these are main ideas. If you have some questions, I'm open. Thank you. Thank you for presentation.